and I'm going to be doing a movie review for the movie The Lodge. Uh, recently I saw the movie The Lodge over the 21st, so near the end of uh, February. <laughs> I wrote an intro, move over Ari Aster, because you have some distant cousins in the story. You have some distant cousins coming for the dollhouse storytelling throne. So, The Lodge is directed by Veronica Friends and Severn Fila, which their most notable movie uh, in recent years has been Goodnight Mommy. <clears throat> the Lodge is a horror thriller film that has been making the rounds of film festivals such as Sundance, South by Southwest, and the Toronto International Film Festival in 2019 but was only recently released nationwide in the U.S. as of February 2020. Uh, the film stars Jaden Martel of Knives Out, as Riley Kof, uh from Mad Max Fury Road, or if you know her more from many other TV series, The Girlfriend Experience on Stars, uh, Richard Armington, and newcomer, uh, oh, infamous... <laughs> Actress Alicia Starstone and newcomer actress Leah Mc McHugh. So the basic premise is, hold on, just start this. <laughs> so the basic premise of the movie follows a family retreat to the remote winter cabin over the holidays when the father, played by Richard Armington, Armit Armage, is forced to abruptly depart for work. He leaves his children, Aiden played by Itz, Jaden, Martel, and Mia, played by Leah McHugh, in the care of his new girlfriend, Grace, played by Riley Code. Isolated and alone, a blizzard traps them inside the lodge as terrifying events summon specters from Grace's dark past. Uh, some things I liked about this movie, which I'll also get into some similarities to Ari Aster's film, good, uh, Hereditary, because I've noticed some similarities while I was watching this film. Uh, some things I liked about the film, uh, from the start, it keeps you engaged pretty well. Uh, it literally keeps you on the edge of the seat from minute one. Similar to Hereditary. Uh, another thing I liked is the foreshadowing device of the dollhouse. It wasn't too overused. You, It kind of opened up how the movie was going to be, but it didn't really spoil anything. Uh, and the way they used it as the movie progresses is actually really well. <laughs> not too much given away, not too much a little not explained, so there's enough left there to be desired. Or not enough left there to be desired, but enough left there to be satisfied. Um, another thing I liked about it was the setting and the pacing of the events unfolding. Because, uh, it doesn't really start out as happy and somber, but it takes you from a mood of, eh, content to downhill. We're moving at 300 miles per hour, insanity. And that was a pretty good touch, and how slowly they unravel it. Uh, it's a very claustrophobic environment for the setting they use. A uh, lodge just in the middle of a mountain, a mountain backdrop, which is pretty good. Uh, another thing as well is Riley Co. As uh, Grace worked really well, and she's very, uh, she's a phenomenal actress. Uh, I've seen her work in The Girlfriend Experience, which if you haven't seen that show, I'd recommend you watch. Uh, it's a part of Stars, so if you have a Stars channel, uh, give that show a watch. Uh, some things I disliked about the movie, uh, I didn't care much at all for the dad character. I mean, he honestly might as well have just not even been a character in the movie. Uh... You can tell from the way the characters, the children respond to him, like, yeah, dude, we don't really care about you at all. You're basically <laughs> not much to us, and we don't like you as much as they do not like Grace as either, who plays his girlfriend. Uh, one thing I also didn't like was the explanation of uh, Grace's backstory. I mean, I understand why they did it to give you a sense of the events unfolding and why they're unfolding in the movie but I feel like they could have at least left a little bit of mystery and a lot more to be desired rather than just within the first 30 minutes telling you everything that happens uh, 
some comparisons I make to Ari Aster's uh, Hereditary is how in Hereditary, the thing that sparks the major tragedy is the death of a loved one, the grandmother and that the grandmother and the family, as well as the loss of the daughter, spark that. And it's a very similar element here, but a bit different. But it's very similar also in the way the dollhouse is basically the framing device. If you've also seen Ari Aster's Midsommar where he basically shows you everything that happens in the first 30 minutes of the movie. Uh, not the first 30 minutes, but at least within like a visual framing of the movie. Like you already know what's going to happen, so I, you know, I like that aspect of it. But in here, it wasn't too overdone. Uh, overall, I'd give this movie a rating of 3.8 out of 5. Uh, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. And from minute one, you won't be bored or any bored or not entertained and the pacing of it is just right. It isn't moving too fast or too slow and it keeps you engaged. Uh, the next movie I will be reviewing towards basically since this is the last week of February is The Invisible Man uh, and maybe Onward because I have an early screening of that month Saturday on the 28th or 29th so but I'll be reviewing The Invisible Man to end out uh, February but as far as I can tell you right now, my top three movies of February would probably be The Lodge, first off Sonic in the first place, to The Lodge, and uh, more than likely The Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss. Oh, uh, March looks like it has uh, enough good movies coming out, which I will be looking very forward to. On my top list to see is A Quiet Place 2, Bloodshot with Vin Diesel, and move on, as well as The Hunt, since that's officially being released now, and uh, Saint Maud, if that is released in my area. But other than that, uh, thank you for joining me for another movie review, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one for Invisible Man. Ciao, ciao.